Good morning. Good morning. I'm Paul Farber. I'm Ken Lum, and we're the team of Monument Lab. Monument Lab is a national public art and history project based in Philadelphia. We work with partners in our hometown and those in other cities, um, and we've just launched a national fellows program, podcast, and operate around the idea of challenging monuments in our current moment. Monument Lab came out of uh, uh, both of our teaching at the University of Pennsylvania. We were asking all kinds of questions in terms of how the monumental landscape of Philadelphia came to be, why this differentiation, who gets represented, who gets overrepresented, who does not get represented, who does not get heard. One of the questions we asked was, why does is, why is the city uh, have a Rocky statue when um, Joe Frazier, who's an actual person, not a fictional and actually a Philadelphian, uh, didn't get represented. And even now, he's only represented because it's on private uh, property, but the city does not have a statue of Joe Frazier. And also, why the, of course, we're very proud of uh, the uh, link to uh, Benjamin Franklin, but there are so many Benjamin Franklins uh, in Philadelphia, <laughs> and uh, the parkway was named after something else, and it became the, uh, the Benjamin Franklin Parkway, and so on. So. We think that uh, it doesn't entirely cover uh, what the city is in terms of uh, representing uh, its history. We began our work in public around a central question. What is an appropriate monument for the city of Philadelphia? We asked this question in the central courtyard of our city hall to as many people as we could in 2015 in a discovery phase supported by the Pew Center for Arts and Heritage. One person who answered the call was the artist Terry Adkins, whose response to the question was to build an empty classroom, noting Philadelphia's storied uh, legacy of a place of education, but also the recent closures of public schools and budget cuts affecting public education. This was a critical project, but it was meant to invite ideas and dialogue. And for Terry Adkins, he wanted to model this sculpture after a classroom, an actual one in Philadelphia, where teachers were first trained to teach. Again, thinking about how to conjure stories of the past toward a more productive future. At this site, we also gathered responses from public participants from a form to gather their ideas to treat it as data, like any other information about the city. And we gathered these forms in another kind of classroom, a learning lab, where throughout a three and a half week discovery phase, um, students, a public historian, and a social worker engaged people in public. The number one question was, what's this? And once we talked through this idea of shaping a conversation around monuments, people had ideas spilling out. In that time, 35,000 people came to the courtyard of City Hall during our working hours, and 455 people left proposals. Reading them is like reading a beautiful, haunting account of the city. This work inspired us to scale up, to think about this model of a prototype monument by an artist with a learning lab adjacent. This was in our city hall courtyard, and we imagined taking this much wider to 10 sites around the city, to the iconic public squares and neighborhood parks. We worked with 10 municipal agencies, including Mural Arts Philadelphia as our lead partner, and we invited 20 artists of a variety of experiences and backgrounds. It was important for us to have an artist cohort that match the demographics of the city in terms of race, gender, sexuality, class, and national belonging. We'll take you through a few of the samples from uh, the Monument Lab exhibition in 2017, and of course, our friend and collaborator Mel Chin, who's here today. His project was also right at the heart of the city in the City Hall Courtyard. To me, it's a monument. To me, to you, to us and kind of questions that balance between individualism and collectivity. Anyone is worthy of monumental status 
but so is someone else, and that is both the challenge and the invitation. Part of Mel's work was about accessibility, and you can see here from above, 90 feet of ADA accessible ramp snaking behind each of the monument pedestals. People went up in wheelchairs and strollers with families, really taking a sense of pride and ownership in the ability to rise to monumental status. And this is a uh, very touching work by uh, Cuban-American artist uh, Tanya Bruguera. It's called uh, Monument to the Immigrant. It's unusual in the sense that it's um, made out of unfired clay so that over the course of the Monument Lab exhibition, it would crumble and break down. And it pr uh, projected a very poignant uh, kind of narrative in terms of the real life experiences of immigrants. Moreover, the child is, face is shaved in half so that anyone it could stand in for anybody. The artist Sharon Hayes' project, If They Should Ask, is a monument to the lack of women represented in public art in Philadelphia. In a city that boasts over 1,500 sculptures to historic figures, there are only two to women who've actually lived, one of whom is Joan of Arc, who is not a famous Philadelphian, though worthy of monumental status. Sharon Hayes worked with a group of intergenerational and intersectional women uh, artists, activists, and organizers in Philadelphia to gather the names of women who could have or still could be honored in the city of Philadelphia. This is a beautiful work by uh, artist uh, Caitlin Pomerantz on, in historical um, Washington Square. Uh, one of the uh, pedestrian concourses had its public benches removed and replaced by the storied stoop or the steps. And these stoops are actually salvaged from demolition projects as the city undergoes massive uh, uh, gentrification all, and creating all kinds of uh, tensions, progress and tensions in terms of, in terms of its, this historical moment. Karen Olivier's remarkable The Battle is Joined was installed in the neighborhood of Germantown in Vernon Park. She remixed a Revolutionary War monument um, to the Battle of Germantown that had been installed about 100 years before and become not just a fixture in the park, but almost furniture in the background. And so in thinking about how monuments reflect us, she put an acrylic mirror over top the monument, inviting people in the neighborhood to see themselves and to see their surroundings in a new way. And of course, for our exhibition, The Talk of the Town, artist Hank Willis Thomas's All Power to All People was a monumental sized Afro pick right across from City Hall in Philadelphia. And for Hank, this is a piece that um, was in conversation with Klaus Oldenburg's uh, monumental works in Philadelphia, including the clothespin and the paintbrush nearby. And of course, it was an intervention into a locally contentious monument uh, uh, situation with a statue of former mayor Frank Rizzo, who is known for his legacies of racist, sexist, and homophobic tactics. And this has been a site of longtime dissension um, and protest. And Hank's piece, though temporary at, uh, for several months, was an important part of the discourse. Here, an editorial cartoon in the Philadelphia Inquirer scaled Rizzo down to size. During the exhibition, the city of Philadelphia announced plans to remove the Rizzo statue from the front steps of the Municipal Services Building. You can see the power of public art. Permanent work compels, but temporary work also catalyzes and invites new ways to experience the city. Not all of the works were sculptural. Here is a projection on City Hall by the artist Michelle Angela Ortiz, Seguimos Caminando, which was a monument to mothers detained at an immigrant family prison right outside of Philadelphia. Artist Marisa Williamson's Sweet Chariot was a map and an app that was triggered by sites of African American history in our old city district that were on a historic plaque or a mural or a sign and invited new ways to interpret those sites, including those associated with Independence National Heritage Park of course, part of the work was gathering public participation and knowledge production. And so at the labs throughout the city, we collected 
with our technology on the back end, a front end system that invited people with blank pieces of paper, Sharpies, and clipboards. At the labs, we hired 20 high school students, 15 artist educators, and our college students received credit to speak with Philadelphians throughout last fall. In that time, 250,000 people engaged at the labs around the city. That's approximately one in eight people in Philadelphia. And about 4,500 left their own proposals. This we've gathered into a report to the city, which there are copies of the exhibition hall next door. We presented it to the mayor of Philadelphia and all of the city commissioners last week. All of the, the reports are also in each of the free library branches. And our findings out of this research, we highlight four key themes. Rethinking common knowledge, craving representation, seeking connection with others, and reflecting on power and process. Like any kind of data, it can be spliced and diced, but ultimately our goal was to produce stories about the city with people in the city, to theorize public space in public space, and to think about how this form of participation can be powered by the visions of artists and also meet people where they are. People carry with them profound sense of how the city is and how the city could be. Monument Lab will continue this work in dialogue and conversation with, converse, with the work happening around the country, critically engaging the monuments that we have inherited and unearthing the next generation of monuments. Thank you. Thank you.